As a next step, I want to bring in a header in this application. Because I will not only have a list or a grid of products, but I want to have a header which allows the user to go to the user account or to sign in, log out and so on. And to go to the shopping cart, of course, and manage the shopping cart and, well, use it. So in order to do this, I will go to the getbootstrap.com page again, so to the bootstrap page. And on components ribbon here, I'll pick the nav bar. And this is the default nav bar bootstrap ships with. Now you may replace this with whichever code you want or whichever nav bar you want, but I think it's fine for my purposes here. So I will just go back to the views folder and now I will create a new subfolder, which I will call partials. And this folder should hold the, well, partials, the files which should be included in a variety of different files, possibly at least. I will create a new file here called header.hps. And in this file, I will paste this bootstrap header code. Now we'll edit this code in a few seconds, but for now, I want to include this header in the layout. However, now in order to implement this, I have to replace the handlebars templating engine, the generator used for us with another one. I do this by opening up a new terminal window and then navigate it into this project folder. I run npm install minus minus save to save an entry in the package.json file and then express minus handlebars. And this will install another handlebars templating engine, third party package, which offers more features than the built in one. With that, I will go to my app.js file. Now, in order to use this newly installed package, I will create a new variable here, which I will call express HPS, which will just import this express handlebars package we just installed. Now, as a next step, I will go down here where the view engine is set up and replace this app set here with app engine. Register this new engine with a name I want to set. So I will use .hbs here. And then I will use the express, oops, this should be handlebar, so hbs, not hsb. So you use this package I just brought in and execute it, kind of start it with this command here. And I will pass a JavaScript object to this method here to configure the templating engine. I will set the default layout to layouts. So this will always search for layouts.hbs file. And I will set the extension name to .hbs to keep this, well, .hbs extension we're already used to. Otherwise, I would have to change all file names to .handlebars, which is the default this package ships with. Now here, I will then replace this HBS with .hbs as well to refer to this new engine. And for this to work, this should be layout, not layouts, by the way. For this to work, I will create a new subfolder called layouts, and I will move my layout into the subfolder here. So with all these changes in place, if I now restart the server, and reload this page. You can see it still works. Now I can include my header here, this partial. And I do this by going to the layout and then right at the beginning of the body tag, before the actual content of a view is entered, I again open double curly braces. Then I have the greater than sign, close the curly braces. And then I specify the name of the partial I want to include. By default, this will look for this file in the partials folder. So all I have to do here is specify header. Now, if I reload this page, you can see this bootstrap header being at the top. Now, while this is great, I don't need all this stuff here. And regarding the right dropdown, I will well get rid of some links and I will also rename this to be more fitting like user account and shopping cart, for example. So back in the header, First, I'll get rid of the complete left part of, these, of the nav bars of this unordered list and the search form here. And next, I will get rid of some of the links in the dropdown on the right. And then I will rename the dropdown to, let's say, user account or whatever you like. And then I would have the, let's say, 
yeah, the, the, the user account here. So let me rename this to user management, for example. And then here, the second link should be log out, assuming we're logged in. And this will be changed later on, depending on the real state of the user. So with this in place, what I will next do is, I will rename the link here to shopping cart. And if I now reload, this looks a lot better. However, it would be nice to have little icons next to these links here to indicate, well, a user symbol and a shopping cart symbol here. That is real easy to do. And I will use Font Awesome for this. Now, Font Awesome is, well, a package, a font, so to say, you can import into your project, but instead of changing your text, it introduces a whole lot of little icons you can use. So by clicking on Get Started, you're able to grab a link to the CDN holding this style sheet. And I will just input this into my layout file here, right before I import my own styles. But positioning doesn't really matter with this package, to be honest. And then it's really easy to use. So if I want a user icon, I can go to icons here and then just search for user and I find all user related icons. I think the first one here is great. So then I can just copy the code it gives me here and enter that in my header right before the user account and also a space bar to have it not sit directly on the text. I will also search for another icon, the shopping cart, so just shopping gives me a couple of shopping carts. I will go with this one here, the classic shopping cart, copy this and input it right before the shopping cart link here. Also have a space after it. And now if we reload the page, this looks good. Where's the user icon? I inserted it in the wrong place, didn't I? Right. It should not be inside the dropdown, but here at the user management link. Now if we reload, this looks much better. So that's great. The header is in place and the overall application doesn't look too bad. But now I want to start adding the product, so the product thumbnails on this index page, though, so that we actually see something. For this, I will go back to my views folder and I will create a new subfolder called shop. Now I will move my index.hps file into this shop folder. And if I now reload, this will break because it no longer finds the index view, of course. So in the index.js file, I will change this to not look for the index file in the views folder, but instead in the shop folder and then in the index or then use the index HPS file. So if I now restart my server and reload this page, this now works again. So that is working again, but back to the thumbnails. How do I get nice looking thumbnails and a grid holding these thumbnails? Well, with Bootstrap, of course. And this is no Bootstrap course, so I won't go into too much detail, but you may just use Bootstrap's built-in grid system. And if you're not aware how this works, this basically divides your whole page into several blocks you can use to structure or to position your data. And this grid system also supports different screen sizes to automatically stack or expand these blocks. So that is really great and allows you to create a flexible, responsive layout without using Flexbox, which in theory is better, but doesn't work in all browsers. If this is all totally new to you, I would recommend you check out some of the many, many bootstrap tutorials, courses and videos you will find on the internet to learn how it actually works. So I will use the grid, but I also want to have a nice looking thumbnail. If we go to the components tab here, you can see that we got this thumbnails point here on the right. And we could either pick a thumbnail with only having an image, but I want to have one with having a text or which has a text as well. Later on, I want to have a price at the bottom too, and I want to only have one link and move that to the right. But for now, I will gra grab this code here and just insert it here instead of the current content we have. So now if I save this and reload my page, 
Well, we get the thumbnail. It doesn't look that great, to be honest, but we'll get there. It doesn't look that great because currently we're using the thumbnail, but we're not positioning this row inside a container. Bootstrap script works in a way that it has rows and columns in the rows and all rows sit in an overarching container. Now this container currently doesn't exist. So I will add it in my layout.hps file and wrap all views or all the content which might be added by views in such a container. As I have Emmet installed, which is a little plugin in my IDE, which makes it easy for me to create HTML file or HTML tags and assign classes, I can just type dot container and then hit tab to create a div element with a class of container. You might just Google for your favorite editor or IDE and Emmet, E-M-M-E-T, if you're interested in installing this plugin as well. So now I got the container and if I reload now, it at least looks a little bit better, but still, we need an image, we need to fix these buttons. Well, let's start with an image. For now, I will just fetch one from the internet, but of course later on, we want to replace this with images actually living or sitting on our server. So I will search for a great product and what do we want to sell on our shop? How about video games? And I think, well, now I can certainly only make mistakes by picking the wrong game. So great choice by me. Therefore, I will pick a game probably no one knows, but it's a great game by a German game developer, Gothic. Bit older, but one of the greatest RPGs you can know. And of course, I should have known that I don't find the game by just searching for Gothic. So a Gothic game. Yeah, that it is. So definitely buy that game, um, it's great. So I will just pick the link here, deep linking, of course, not something you should do on your page, but that's just for testing purposes here. Use the link back in the index.hps file in the shop folder. I will paste it here in the source of my image. And if I now reload, boom, that's big. Well, Gothic is a great game. It certainly deserves to be that big but that's too big. Now I want to change this and I will change the overall styling or the maximum height this image element may have inside a thumbnail. I will do this in my own style sheet, style.css here, and I just add a rule thumbnail and then image. Each image tag in the thumbnail, and we only have one of course, should have a maximum height of 150 pixels. And I will also, back in the index.hps file, give this image an, a class of image responsive, which is a bootstrap class. Now if we reload, this looks better. And of course you may style this to, to your needs, how you want this to look. I'm happy with it like this. And next, of course, I want to, well, add some dummy text here and change the buttons. To add the dummy text, I will again use Emmet and by only typing lorem and then hitting tab, I get some dummy text here. Now, if you don't have that plugin and you don't want it or can't have it, you, are also, you can also get dummy text like this by just searching for lorem ipsum and you will probably find pages like this one, loremipsum.de. And while this page is on German, it's really straightforward to use. Just enter the number of words you want to generate. Then you choose, well, if this is the number of words or number of characters or paragraphs, hit go and boom, here you got your dummy text to copy. So if I reload now, I got the dummy text. Now I want to give, make this a little bit more grayish to later on have the price stand out a little bit more and I have to fix the button still. So first, to make this more grayish, I will give this paragraph holding the description a class of description. And in my style sheet, I will add it in the thumbnail container, of course. Description should have a color, oops, this is a CSS class here, should have a color of, yeah, this is still uh, chosen from the Laravel video I recorded a couple of hours ago. So this is fine. Yep, looks good. Now let me fix the buttons. 
Mm, first thing is, I don't need the first button, I only need the second one. This here should not be a paragraph, but a div holding the button. And it should also hold a div with the price of, let's say, $12. And I will give this div a class of price to apply some styling to that. The styling I do want to apply is, let's say this should be bold. And I want to have a font size of, let's say, 16 pixels. Also, to move the button, I will add a class to this button. And the class I do want to add is pull right. Now that is a default bootstrap class or a helper class bootstrap ships with, which allows me to float something, this button in this case, to the right. If I reload, this looks really bad and I don't want to sit it down there. It should be inside this whole box. Well, this happens because I got a couple of floats going on on this page and well, by mixing them all up, this results in what we see here. Therefore, on the div holding this button, I will add a class clearfix, also a helper class provided by Bootstrap, which will make sure that all the floats within this div here float kind of on their own and are not masked up by other floats we had before this. So this looks better, but the text doesn't look good here, the price. Of course, this is the case because here we don't have a float. So I will assign pull left to this div to float this on the left and therefore it will now be in line with this button. Last thing is I want to make this button green. And if you have a look on the bootstrap page on the CSS ribbon here or the CSS tab, you find this buttons point here. Now here you find a lot of information about buttons amongst the information how to style them. And I want this green button. I get it by assigning the button success class to the button. And note, you may not only change or style buttons as buttons, so button elements, but also anchor elements or basically all the elements you want to style as buttons. Nothing's keeping you from doing that. So I will replace the button default style in my index.hps file with the button success style to make it green. Now if I reload, that looks a lot like what I want it to look like. A major step here. Last thing is I want to have a couple of thumbnails here, not just one. So for now, later on this will be done in another way, but for now I will copy this column which holds the individual thumbnail and just paste it in two, two more times to have two more thumbnails. And because this column or these columns have the classes they have, they look like they look. Okay, that's a bad explanation. So because they have a class of call MD4 on medium sized screens, each column will take up four blocks of the overall grid and there are 12 blocks available. So three thumbnails plus gutters will fit in one row on a medium sized screen. On a small size screen, because we assigned or by default um, the SM6 class is assigned, only two thumbnails will fit in one row. And of course you may change this, make this here SM1 and you will have 12 thumbnails on your mobile phone. Probably not what you want, but try it out. So with this, if I save, we get three thumbnails in one row. Now in order to also have multiple rows, I will copy all of that, the complete row here and duplicate that. And now I have two rows with three thumbnails each. And that is as far as I want to go for now. In the next lectures or in the next videos, I will take the next steps and step by step add data to this and so on. See you there. Bye.